Hey everyone, Dr. Brian Scott. This is Insights to the End Times. We have been sharing over quite a length of time now, where are we on God's timetable? Do we even have the right to know? And um, <clears throat> praise the Lord, what's going on in the world that would uh, uh, basically support what we're saying from Scripture? We've been examining these two and reconciling them together, bringing them together like this uh, for uh, about a two-year period now. So today, we're excited to be here. This is Thursday, March 21st, technically, or, or theoretically, it's the first day of spring. So let's welcome spring in today. We were, we've been de dedicating this week to answering questions that we have been receiving from our podcast. Thank you for joining us. Appreciate it. If you want to go back and catch all of our previous work, you can go to insightstotheendtimes.com. We have a great uh, library of work there. You can also go to victorylondon.com, and you'll find that we have the entire uh, index of all of our previous episodes. Uh, praise the Lord. We've got well over 600 now, and uh, lots of revelation, lots of understanding, lots of explanation of where we are. We've been answering questions. Yesterday, we were looking at questions dealing with the rapture of the church. Uh, what, does it re what does it mean? What does it refer to? And secondly, how do we really know there will be a rapture? So let's continue that with more questions on the rapture. People are interested in that. Why, why wouldn't you be? You want to be part of it. Here's the question. How do we know that Christ Christians will be raptured um, <clears throat> before the tribulation period? There's a lot of debate about this. Uh, a lot of, uh, of uh, Bible writers, uh, theologians, uh, um, people of that nature who study things of this, uh, you know, and trying to understand it, uh, they've developed all kinds of theories. We have a pre-tribulation rapture theory. We have a mid-tribulation rapture theory. We have a post-tribulation rapture theory. We have a post-millennial reign with Christ uh, a rapture theory. We got rapture theories all over the map. What we have shared with you over the last two years has been this. There will be a pre-tribulation rapture of believers before the seven years of tribulation begin. There will be a second rapture occurring at the midway point of the tribulation period. According to Revelation chapter 7, verses 9 through 17, the mid-tribulation rapture will be an uh, un innumerable an, a, comp, a group of the believers involved, will, it will be an innumerable company. I'm having trouble getting that word up, but it's going to be so vast, so large that you won't be able to count it. Then there's a rapture that occurs about six months later of the 144,000 Jewish young men that God raises up as evangelists to minister during the first four years of the tribulation period. And then finally, at the tail end of the tribulation period, on the very last day, just before the Battle of Armageddon, two witnesses that have been witnessing on behalf of God and have been coming against the work of the Antichrist, they are resurrected from the dead. They've been laid on the street for three and a half days. They're going to be resurrected from the dead and raptured into heaven just before the Battle of Armageddon. So when you take these four raptures and you take the three previous individual raptures of Enoch, Elijah, and Jesus, you end up with God's perfect number of seven raptures. So how do we know that Christians will be raptured before the tribulation period? Well, Scripture tells us this, and let me share just a very few Scriptures with you uh, along those lines. First of all, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 10, Paul's writing to the uh, believers in Thessalonica, he says, <clears throat> um, wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead. That's Jesus. Even Jesus, who delivers us from the wrath to come. So Jesus is delivering believers from the wrath that's coming. That's a reference to the seven years of tribulation. In chapter 5 of the first Thessalonians, verse number 9, it says, God did not appoint us to wrath, but to attain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. So we're not, we're not um, foreordained to go through this wrath. We're going to be removed from it. 
in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 3 through 8, an interesting set of scriptures. It's talking about the revelation of the Antichrist, the son of perdition, the man of sin, will be revealed. So let's look at verse 3. Don't be deceived by any means, for that day will not come. This is the day of his revelation. Will not come until a falling away occurs first, or comes first. And the man of sin is then revealed, the son of perdition. So they're speaking of a day, that a special day, that is going to occur. And once that day occurs, that's when the man of sin, the son of perdition, can be revealed. Who is that? That's the Antichrist. Praise the Lord. Verse 4. He opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing that, showing himself that he is God. That's been Satan's objective, his goal, his plan since he was kicked out of heaven. It led to him being kicked out of heaven. He wanted to be as God, above God, more than God. The Antichrist is going to fulfill that on the earth He's going to come to the throne in or the temple in Jerusalem, sit on the throne and declare himself God. Let's go on. Verse 6. Now you know what is restraining, that he may be revealed in his own time. So the restrainer is, is a force that keeps him the, the Antichrist from being revealed, obviously. So who is the restrainer? This is where it gets interesting. The mystery of lawlessness is already at work. We could say it this way. The spirit of the Antichrist is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. Once the restrainer is removed, then the Antichrist can be revealed. So the long-held teaching that I grew up under was that the reveal or the restrainer is the Holy Spirit. And once he is removed then the Antichrist can be revealed. Here's the problem with that. During the seven years of tribulation, people are getting saved. That's why the mid-tribulation rapture is massive. That's why God appoints 144,000 Jewish men as evangelists to get multitudes of people saved during the first half of the tribulation period. Well, what's the role of the Antichrist? To get people saved. So if he's going to be removed so the Antichrist can be revealed, which kicks off the seven years of tribulation, we got a, we got a problem because we've got all kinds of salvations going on. So we go to the next verse. Then the lawless one will be revealed. So this time sequence we're talking about is the Antichrist, the lawless one, the man of sin, the son of perdition, cannot come on the scene until the restraining force is removed. Who and what is the restraining force? The body of Christ, the church of Jesus Christ. Once the church is removed, praise the Lord. Once the church is removed, how are they removed? By the rapture. It can't be the Holy Spirit because he's the one who leads people into salvation. And, and, and that would eliminate the mid-tribulation rapture, which Revelation 7 says that's an innumerable company of people who wash their robes white in the blood of the Lamb during the great tribulation. So, wow, glory to God, praise the Lord. I hope I've helped you with that. Here's the other final comment I want to make in this respect. If you read the book of Revelation, the church is referred to in the first three chapters extensively is referred to extensively but from chapter 4 through 18 which described the seven years of tribulation the refer a refer there's no reference whatsoever to the church and then when we get to the last four chapters 20 21 and or 19 20 21 and 22 when we're talking about the millennial reign of christ and eternity that's when the church is, is referred to once again. So there's a gap in terms of the church being referred to in a scripture, and it's a gap covering the tribulation period. And the reason, we're not here. See you tomorrow.